दृष्टि विद्या संबंध ने आरंभ करी मे काटे तो मे अवस्था इष्ट सिद्ध करना मेम काटे तो इंग्लिश पसीन उबहा उबट गिने सदहा मगे आराधने ऐक्या दृष्टि विशेषाज्ञ कुमारी रत्नायक महात्मेट गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी I like, first of all, I like to extend my warm welcome to all of you on behalf of IKEA Institute of Sri Lanka. Especially, we have to mention our honourable optometrist Albert Edrisinghe, and he was the first to um, get a London graduation on in year 1960, and uh, also he uh, started optometry education in Sri Lanka at uh, University of Vidyo there. Um, this is uh, with actually Professor. Henry Freeman and Professor C S Felix. So we especially salute him on this occasion. Me ma avastava itha matna matna avastava. Me avastava is duchchi shethre pilibandu katha karu. Or Sri Lanka ve pratham upadi daria vasin sandhanu no Alberti Drisinga. Me thi tuma. E tuma idhasna me sehati vasare London kotsi ke karala. Me rati e rati e upadi laba ge na C S Felix. महाचार तुम सह हरी प्रीम महाचार तुम समग लंका वट पेमिल्ला विद्योदय विश्वविद्यालय वकट मे दृष्टि विद्या पाठमाल आरंभक ये गौरव मे अवस्था प्रकाशक नोन विना दिखता बलपुर In year 2009, as the first time in, in Sri Lankan history, IKEA Institute have introduced and implemented the Code of Ethics for the IKEA professionals. From there onwards, the members of IKEA Institute followed these ethics more meaningfully. And also in our practice places, we used to display those principles to the public notice. These ethics have made our profession more prestige and respectable. It helped to build confidence among the Uh, profit, uh, confidence among the public, um, general public. So let's stand for the code of ethics. Dr. Kiri, same as it is for Rodi Agi, I see how Vishwas and Yatve are upshakarani. Narate hi nere. Oru noyali in mari me, puri me, pirithar me, shiyo puri me kele magitte narate. Code of ethics: the respect, the right and dignity and autonomy of the patient. Upades. रहस्य भाव आरक्षा उत्तरवाद To ensure that all personnel have access to eye and vision care, usas bahave. Rogi agi yaha bata venuin maage urtiya dhanu ma saha ravina thaya ha usalata vardhane karagani ma avashita avya bavda nimi. Unnecha noyali nanme perum korute namaze thori na rivo kreshi matra drame hale valatu kollal. Advance their professional knowledge and proficiency to maintain and expand competence to benefit their patients. आदर्शमत 
අවංක භාවයෙන් උත් සාධාරණ භාවයෙන් හා කරුණාව දයා වෙන යුතුව වෘත්තියේ නියැලෙමි. වලි හාටද ඉතුරයින් නිර්මයි නම්බහතන්මයි අන්දු ඉරකම් වලිපරතන්මයි ලෝර උදාරණ පුරුෂ වාහ එමක නාමයේ ඉරත. කන්ඩක් themselves as exemplary citizen professional with honesty integrity fairness kindness and compassion. Thank you. Uh, well, we are now moving to the agenda today and there is a very special person I am going to invite him today for the first uh, session. He is a senior consultant optometrist, senior lecturer and I am also privileged to announce that he is a founder of IKEA Institute, Sri Lanka. He is none other than opt senior optometrist Naresh Pradhan. I know Ranjit you have something to say about. IKEA Drishti Visi Satya Ayatane Merate Bihivela Itab Matma Sestrata Itab Matma Anagi Sevavak Karamin Adadakwa Amagi Me Sestri Visala Venasak Atikaran Aikya Drishti Adyapanika Ayatane Hakiya Vak Labila Tibino Ima Aikya Drishti Vidya Ayatane Adyapanya Hadaran Ekamutuak Samaga Aikya Drishti Vise Sanjengi Sangame Arambavila Tibino Me Sielu Karya and Veladi Itama Manavin Tamange Golin Hasuromin Sestrata Vadat Paladai Sevia Kirimata Vesa Mahansi Gat Ape Guru Naresh Pradhan Matutumatai Me Gauranuya Aradane Obege Atpolan San Mat Nadia Madde Etuma Vedikavata Feminati. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are here for 2014 today and uh, our theme is uh, Synergy for Change. In a sense, Synergy stands for what we call Synergy is 1 plus, plus 1 is uh, equal to 3. In a sense, one person and next person or one person, one group or next, next group, they together mix or three times, in a sense, more than two person could do, right? So that is what we call as a synergy for change. And here, what we are trying to gather is uh, not only IKEA people, we wanted more and more other organization and more and more people that they get together and try to do some sort of a changes, which is good for the IKEA profession, uh, good, for the, good for the public, and uh, that's our kind of a responsibility that we are, you know, expecting here. So this IKEA 2014 uh, is that's why we name as a uh, as a uh, is for synergy for change. And uh, two years back, uh, we had a uh, if we flash back, we had a program called IKEA 2012 Transformation Age of Optometry. And uh, there, what happens? You know, we expected from the media and everybody that this. Uh, profession, you know, this profession without any knowledge, without any sort of a uh, pre-qualification, without any sort of a uh, pre-assessment, uh, anybody could do, anybody could enter, and anybody could entertain. So this was a trade, and uh, so uh, fortunately, you now within these two years of time, uh, we managed with TVC to get a get a you know national standard, and today, according to the Parliament Act number 20, 1990. Sri Lanka becomes the first country to have a South Asian country to have a optician law. So we expect in future uh, to that optometry becomes regulated for that the activities are going and we are getting more help from uh, college ophthalmologists uh, and other parties also. And uh, we expect this profession will be regularized and uh, that will be benefited for all the stakeholders of IK profession. So. So, as in my message in 2012, uh, calibration and distribution, which has been locked for the profession for the last so many decades, and which has not weakened us, but also encouraged the unethical practice in this country. So, you know, so this has been so many, you know, so there were some, you know, parties, some groups, some this thing. So, they were cre creating barrier, they were, you know, labeling themselves 
and uh, you know say they they, they uh, you know so there was uh, you know different different kind of a groups so they each other discriminate they, they doesn't uh, come you know they doesn't respect each other and that sort of a situation you know we faced in 2010 when and when we started in 2007 we had that sort of a problem today in 2014 i'm very happy to say you know it has been reduced significantly so within these two years we have come in a same table uh, and uh, we are sharing a lot of things together and if you take uh, those days you know optometrist uh, could be you know even uh, you get a association membership you become an optometrist. You don't have a qualification, you don't have, that is not unfortunate of them because of, there was no institute such that people, even they wanted to go and learn, there was no institute such and there was no need because of anybody could practice, anybody could open an optical shop, anybody could do the, do the things that other person, you know, who, who is qualified enough to do. You know, so this, uh, you know, this, because of this reason, you know, there was no need. So after, you know, this regulation, regulatory things are coming up, so more and more people are getting in and more and more institutes are forming in and more and more institutes are getting registered in government uh, institutions. So that is what we see are bigger changes in, in these two years of time. So that time, that's why we said, you know, optometrist, uh, become an optometrist by membership, become an optometrist by qualification. So that uh, discrimination that, uh, you know, so what we see and, uh, you know, in this profession, a lot of people, they end enter to this profession, I don't say it is, you know, I'm not discriminating them, but it is, I became an optometrist by chance, you know, so just get into the optical shop, saw, saw it is very profitable, and you know, in, uh, so no point of getting into other job because of there was no rules and regulation, no knowledge necessary, no, uh, nothing necessary, so you can, you, you easily get into, so everybody was quite happy. So, but uh, the result of that, you know, is uh, very, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it is very serious because of, uh, changing our lenses and giving them and not looking into the eye and not referring them to the eye surgeon, not referring them to anybody was a critical aspect because of if you take about, we have over thousand optical shops and if everybody, this is what I taught in media last uh, two years back and a lot of people criticize me, but it is the truth. It is the truth what we have to, we have to accept. Not, not that we don't want, you know, these people to, uh, we don't want to kill these people. We want to upgrade them, you know. We want these people to get upgraded themselves. So it has been done. It has been done. And uh, so today, you know, lot many, you know, say, lot many people are going into the program, getting into the seminars, getting into the things. So it has been improved. They uh, today realize, and they say, they, some same people, they, what, who was criticizing me today, they are with me. And they are, you know, they are talking today, you know, uh, this is this could have been happened about 10 years back so so it is you know so transformation is of optometry is it's a we are pro shaping reshaping our profession and uh, you know and reducing this dis discriminations and we are you know educating more people and we are sharing our knowledge and we are you know attracting new generation to choose this profession not by chance and by choice to come in to this profession Right, so so that is what uh, we expected in 2012, and uh, we knew that. You know, in my message in uh, in same uh, same journal we have written, I hope 2012 will be successful but painful. So it will, you know, so a lot of people will criticize and uh, this thing will happen, but that will change change the things, and that will be a hard step for us, but still it will write the new new lessons. Today, you know, it's a result of this. It's a result of this. What we see is today. Sri Lanka is one of the major, you know, all the major organizations are standing together and forming a one council called Sri Lankan Council of Optometry and Orthoptics. You know, so this is a, a main milestone gain and I, you know, I'm very happy to see this, all this uh, level of, you know, uh, you know, uh, major organizations that they are coming together and sharing to each other. So, what we want, what we want to do for the, for the country, actually, actually, you know, what we want is, access to safe ocular, ocular and general health for the all people, you know, so it should be very safe and uh, it should not be like say, uh, you know, you do uh, just a, you know, manual refraction or the subject refraction and send the patients and finally the patient uh, end up with the, glo you know, glaucoma, severe glaucoma and uh, patient becomes blind. So we have to have more, you know, awareness program to prevent, for the preventive action, we have last year, uh, we have taken so many steps for the preventive, uh, pre preventive program and develop a standard on eye and vision related uh, these things so which we have expected and that has been done 
and already the optometrist and optician standard has been developed, which has been endorsed. And uh, optometry developed standard on eye and vision related professions, you know, for this purpose. Now, actually, they are Sri Lanka, you know, still what happens, we give driving license for, you know, Islan chart. So, you know, the Islan chart could be read if somebody does not have it has not affected for central three degree of visual field. You know, say, so somebody who cannot see whole steering even can get a driving license. So for this, you know, with some media and for with some media people, I went even to RMB and we, we talked to them. And there are certain activities that we are taking in. And uh, we are, you know, we yesterday even, uh, even with, uh, you know, deputy minister was there. So we were talking on this, uh, you know, in the same issues. So, you know, so this is, you know, certain things like say, so say if you take about Peradin University, somebody like say who wants to en enter to uh, electronics engineering. So they are look for what? They are look for an A-level ECT school and he's not look for, look for a color vision deficiency or whatever sort of thing. Finally, what happens if he does a degree even, if he completes the degree even, what happens? Because he, if he has a color, color vision problem. So this, you know, the wherever the vision related issues are there, we should have a, you know, we should have some sort of a standard, right? So for a, for a driving license, we should have a better standard. For a, uh, for a you know, uh, university recruitment on certain professions, that it has to have a, you know, certain standards. For our industrial people, you know, we have been uh, working out with occupational health and safety people, and we have uh, done at uh, Katunayaka three companies, uh, you know, and uh, we are working out on that. And, you know, so this standard has to be developed. So where people get injured, they become blind, you know, so this has to be avoided. And B, replacement for the non-IK professional dealing with the ocular health and vision. So if you take about, the largest uh, eye bank, if you take in Sri Lanka, you know, so which supplies the eye for the whole country. Actually, the eyes are extracted or the corneas are extracted not by eye care professionals. Those are, you know, just laymen who just doesn't know what is the health of the cornea, right? So if you take about school children, school children, you know, are screened by the PHIs. So PHI are not healthcare pro eye care professionals. So, so these issues, you know, if the person who does say from, from their food, sanitations, buildings, and all sort of thing, he has a lot, huge area. So where I think, you know, it, the person who is directly responsible for eye related profession, you know, has to take over the school eye exemption program. That is what, you know, this, these things has to be changed. And then what happens, we will be having a more safer, safer visual, you know, safer vision and safer ocular health for our tomorrow children tomorrow's this thing. So doing this for a public, we will get the recognition for our profession. Just not because of with the qualification, we will not get the recognition. We have to work with the public. We have to work on behalf of the country and the public. Then we will definitely get our recognition. Recognition from the public is more is stronger than anything else. So by 2014, what I see is, you know, Sri Lanka has a history of, you know, 14th century of spectacle making, like the Taripu, you know, so which is, there is a history to say, you know, King Bhuvanaka Bau, he had a, he had a spectacle, and still those spectacle making is, is still persist in Sri Lanka. So every year, you know, my students goes and sees that, how they make the spectacles lenses, how they grind it, how they, you know, surface it from the stone that we have. And it is not made in China, you know, it is made in Sri Lanka, right? So, you know, so 1961, actually, we Sri Lankans, you know, Sri Lankans, they were very fortunate 